What's up guys? Today's going to be a quick video on how to adjust your tracks to the proper tension on a mini excavator. You can see I'm working on my Kubota KX91, but it's a pretty similar process for most mini excavators. The only thing that'll probably be different is uh, what size bolt is uh, you need to open to get to your grease fitting to adjust the track tension. On this machine, it happens to be a, a 9 16 So I have that right here set up on my Milwaukee ratchet. The other things you'll need to do this would be a good idea to have some shop towels and of course your grease gun. I actually just got this grease gun. It's gonna be my first time using it. This is the Milwaukee 2646-20. It takes the M18 battery. It'll definitely make things easier when it comes to greasing and especially things that are going to take, uh, you know, need to take a lot of grease. So the first step we're going to need to do is to lift the machine. What I like to do is I take the bucket, push it down, get this end of the tracks up, and then I put the blade down and then that'll lift the back side up. And then both sides of the tracks will, will be lifted. I've seen some guys, they just use the bucket and they'll just push it over the one side and do one track at a time. I don't really see a real advantage in doing it that way, but I mean, you guys let me know what you think. What do you, what do you put it in the comments down below? Do you, do you normally just lift the whole machine up in one shot or do one side at a time? Like I said, I think it makes it easier just lifting the whole thing up. Oh, and the other thing about, I don't know if this is a Kubota specific thing or it's on most machines, but in the manual, it says, look for the track seam and it's identified by this eight this eight mark right here and uh, it says you you want to put this at the top between the idler and the sprocket so I want that to be in this area so what I'm gonna do because when I'm on the machine I might not be able to see that too well I'm just gonna take this marker and mark it so that way I can look over the side. Let me see, maybe I can get a little mark underneath of it too, yeah. That way I could just look over the side, see this silver mark, and I'll know I could stop it right when it's uh, between the idler and the sprocket. Well, anyways, let's get started. Now you can see there's my silver mark about halfway between the sprocket and the idler. And then the other side, same thing, silver mark. And that's why I like lifting the whole machine up in one shot, because if you mark both tracks, I could just spin them both where they need to go, and now I can grease both sides without having to, I'm trying to get out of this glare. Seems like every time I make a video, the sun's chasing me. Anyways, I'm able to do both tracks without spinning the machine around and lifting up one side and then the other. And I don't know how crucial it is to put the seam there, but that's what the service manual says, and so that's what I'm doing. All right, so now I'm just going to take my ratchet. I'm going to go ahead and remove this bolt. All right, so it looks like me spraying off with the hose in there may have worked a little bit. But I'm also gonna take this shop towel and wipe off the Zerk fitting. You don't wanna pump any dirt into your tensioner. Now on this machine, you can see these tracks are quite a bit loose. Um, they say you need a half inch between the middle idler and this part of the track. I say a half inch or just my one fat finger. So here we go, got it plugged in. You see the track tightening, you can see it jumping. Be like one or two more pumps.
that's good for me now one thing i i always think it's better if it it would be better for the track to be a tad loose compared to a tad tight um because when it when it's tight it really puts strain on everything if it's just a little loose it's not that big of a deal so if you're unsure you know you don't have to go ahead and get out your you know ruler or anything like that to get it exact but a good guesstimate and like i said if you want to err on the side of caution then uh just make it a little bigger so this side's tight i'm gonna go ahead and do the other side before i close this up i just take a rag in there wipe off that grease fading a little bit try not to leave too much extra grease on that fitting especially because like i said the dirt if you drive through some mud it gets pushed in there and if there's a big glob of grease on that it's all going to stick to it there you have it guys pretty straightforward video on how to tighten your tracks on your mini excavator um, leave a comment below let me know how you guys do it if you do something a little bit differently if there is advantage of lifting up one side over the other i i can't think of one but you know i'm always open to to learning new ideas especially if it makes things easier and also guys that have this milwaukee grease gun like i said it's the 2646-20 let me know what you guys think of it i mean it's my first time using it that's all i used it for was to grease these tracks um and i'm probably going to grease the machine too while i'm at it but let, let me know what you guys think of it the, the pros and the cons also, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. I got another video that'll come out probably towards the end of, of this week, a week from now. We're going to be replacing a menu board, a little bit different than a lot of my other videos. At Dunkin' Donuts, you can see, here's one. I just did this last week. Um, I used the Bobcat to, uh, to rig the sign. I picked the sign up, you know, get it out of there, and then uh, place a new sign on, on the footer. I haven't made videos about the side of the business i do a lot of commercial work so it, it's cool it's just a different type of construction so stay tuned for that again thanks for watching